Hi, Brent Greenhant, uh, technical field trainer for HTP. I'm here in our training center with a, a PH7650, a Phoenix light duty model, um, that I'm going to review a startup procedure for you um, in terms of setting up combustion, taking a look at gas pressures, and the overall uh, arrangement of the gas valve. Um, so before we get going on that testing and things like that, we're going to need, need, of course, a few tools to work with. Um, the for first thing, the most important thing is a unit, a working unit, um, and a decent place to get rid of you know, the energy that we're going to be using to do the testing can take up to sometimes a half hour to do the combustion testing. Um, so what we have here is a, you know, a, a cool tank, so we should have plenty of time to do that. And we have it all off right now. Um, I had my analyzer, so we're going to need a combustion analyzer. Uh, we would like to have one with a printer so we can print off some information afterwards. Um, so we're going to get this uh, ready to go outside. You know, so we're going to clear it all out. So we're starting with a fresh analyzer. And then we're going to need a manometer. Um, I happen to have two, so I'm going to read a manifold pressure or low fire readings, and then I'm going to have an inlet gas pressure reading, and I'm going to read that static and dynamically. Um, so before we get going, I'd just like to also give you a layout of the gas valve. So this particular unit uses a Honeywell gas valve. So on this Honeywell gas valve, we have two pressure taps. We have an inlet and an outlet pressure tap. So to access those, you're going to need a, a 10 millimeter Torx uh, fitting to do that. So uh, on this particular valve, we have an inlet pressure tap, which is going to be up here. And then we have an outlet pressure tap, which is going to be down here. So I'm going to start with the inlet pressure tap. I'm going to open that a few turns, get that set up, and then get my manometer over the top of the fitting. And I'm going to take a look at my incoming gas pressure, 7 point inches, uh, is what we're operating here. This is natural gas for this test, or what we're doing here. I'm going to zero out my manifold pressure manometer and I'm going to get that set up same deal you need a Torx 10 to get in there open that a couple turns and I can get my manometer set up in there so there you go I'm ready to do my, my my pressure testing so before we do any combustion sampling or adjustment I want to take a look at my static pressure so this valve is rated from uh, three and a half to 14 inches of incoming gas pressure and typically we see no more than a half inch pressure drop upon ignition. So that's what I'm going to check for. I'm also going to check for the lockup on the regulator um, and meters and things like that. So right now I have 7.8 inches, 7 .8 inches. So I'm going to turn this machine on and I'm going to put it in service mode. So to access service mode, you hit the minus and the plus arrow together at the same time for about five or six seconds. And it should put you into the ignition speed. So there's our ignition. There's our drop. We have 7.2, 7.1. So um, we're dropping a little bit above the half inch, but you're going to be OK there. And then I'm going to shut it back down. So I'm going to press the reset button. That's going to take it out of the test mode for me. And I'm going to check my, my manometer and make sure that the lockup pressure is still within the range. So there it goes 7.7, 7.8 is what we, we run up here in our, in our our training center here. So, so we're good with that. Um, typically on a new installation, we may want to run it through a few cycles and just check that lockup, make sure it's still staying well, well within the range, um, But which we are. So now we're going to get ready to do some combustion testing. So I have my analyzer, as I mentioned, on, cleared out, ready to go. What you don't want to do is have it set into the exhaust before you have established combustion. Um, you can sometimes flood the analyzer and send it into an error, um, and then it's going to be difficult to do this. So I've also for a reference for this video, printed off, of course, a, a copy of the layout of the gas valve that's contained in the manual. And of course, you can get on your HTP app. Um, and then the combustion levels um, that I'm looking for. So again, we're in the natural gas unit. So I have my fan speeds that I'm looking for. And I have my combustion levels. Um, so we need to be, in this particular model, um, well under 20 parts per million in high fire on the CO. Um, pretty close to 0 and low, 1 to 10. And the CO2 range is 8 to 10% both low and high, which means there's not going to be a huge change between the two of them, which is typically what we look for. So to make the adjustments, you're also going to need a couple of Torx wrenches uh, to do that. So the throttle adjustment uses a Torx 25, and the offset uses a Torx 40. So I have those all set up, ready to go. I have my manometers on, zeroed out, ready to rock. So I'm going to get this thing on, and then I'm going to get it in service mode. So again, I'm going to hold the minus and the plus together. It's going to put it in ignition for me. It's going to light it up. Again, I'll take a look at my drop. Now it's going to want to go up to high fire for me. So we'll give it a few seconds. Make sure we've established a good flame. 
then we should be able to get this inside of there and start doing some sampling. Uh, so uh, again, I'm going to take a look at my gas pressure in high fire. I'm still sitting at about 7.1. So get this analyzer set in there, hit that back wall, get it in the middle of the stream, and we can begin to sample. So for high fire, we're going to use our throttle adjustment, which is going to be the Torx 25 if we're going to need to make some adjustments. So I'm going to get that ready. The throttle adjustment on this Honeywell valve is right here. It's down inside of a little, little bit of a tube in there. Um, and this gas valve works a little bit opposite of some of the other ones that we may be used to. So um, typically when we want to make you know, an adjustment up or raise the levels, we're going to go counterclockwise and open the orifice, which is what we're going to do here, except we have to go clockwise to open the valve. So it's reverse um, of some of the valves that we may be used to around here. So I'm going to let it kind of get where it needs to be um, and see where I am uh, combustion-wise. So right now I'm sitting at about four parts per million. Um, 8.7, so uh, we're certainly within the range, 8.8. .8. I'm going to give this another few seconds just to kind of equalize, and then I'm going to raise it up a little bit. I'm going to show you um, what it takes to get this thing closer to the, I'm going to shoot for around, I don't know, maybe 9%, 9.5% just to show you. So we're, there we go with the 9 right there. So I'm going to give it a little bit more through, and as I mentioned, typically we're used to going counterclockwise. This valve, I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to go a half a turn clockwise. See if I can get this to come up a little bit. We'll get 9.1, 9.2, 3. So again, it didn't take too much. So uh, for the video, of course, I'm just going to show you how to how to move these around a little bit. So when I get this back in there, you know, and maybe go a little back towards the other way. You can hear kind of the clicks inside of there as we're turning it. So we'll give that back, back where it was. A little bit more, get it, see if we can bring that back down. Now again, you, you got to give that analyzer the time to, to sample the information that we're looking for. Um, so I've made a few adjustments and it's starting to come down. Um, what you don't want to do is go too far. Um, and then try to let your analyzer catch up to it, and then it's going to go beyond where you want to be, and then you're going to have to go back the other way. Um, so again, you just need a little bit of, you know, a little bit of patience, and uh, you should be able to dial this thing right in. So we're going to go a little bit more. See if we can, like I said, try to get that back down uh, a little bit more normal uh, within the range. So 43 parts per million, 11%. Uh, so it, it clearly is going to need to come down just a little bit. So, again, this is why it's important to, you know, make sure we have a place to dump the heat. It just takes a little bit of time. So uh, we're down to 10.5. Um, what I'm really looking for is, like I said, to be in that 9.5 range, 9 to 9.5 range. Um, and certainly want to see those, that CO come down uh, under, under the 20 parts per million. Um, and for the most part, you're going to see these running, running under that 20 uh, right out of the box. So we're going to make some, again, some more small slight adjustments to this and bring this down just a little bit. You can see it's starting to starting to come down. And we're back under 20 on the CO2, uh, on the CO, sorry, and then uh, we're getting pretty close on the CO2, so we're going to go maybe a couple more clicks down. Let's see if we can set this to about uh, nine and a half, somewhere around there. So again, we just want to make sure we give this, give this analyzer time to get me the information that I need and make sure we don't go too far and have to, you know, go back the other way. Um, it can end up taking a little bit more time than you want to. So 14 parts per million, 9.9. .9. Um, it's pretty good. Well, it's definitely showing, showing the adjustments. So we'll give it another slight turn. And we're going to try to bring this back down again. Just a little bit more. Again, it's, it's well within the range. So um, this is where we see and this is where, you know, where you feel comfortable. It runs good and lights good. Then uh, we're certainly, again, we're well within the range. So... Just give this another chance to kind of come down just a little bit. And yeah, maybe make a small adjustment. All right. That's coming down. That's 
Again, it's dropping. So we'll see where this ends up, and then we're going to go down into low fire and see where we are in low fire and show you how to make an adjustment down there. Uh, 9.5. Again, meanwhile, taking a look at my, my pressure seems to be okay. So 9.5, 9.6, right in that range. Um, 10 parts per million. So I think we're going to be okay with high fire. So again, the throttle screw will allow you to fine tune your high fire. Now this particular model, you can use the minus and plus buttons to raise and lower the fan. Um, or you can hit the temperature minus button and automatically bring it into low fire or hit the temperature plus button and it'll put it back in high fire without going through all the modulation sequences. So we're in low fire. I want to, this is where we're going to look at manifold pressure. So I want to zero this guy out. I'll just make sure we're starting with a good pressure. Um, so again, these run a slight negative uh, on the manifold pressure. Um, so we typically see them, you know, negative 01, 02. Um, but I'm really going to take a look at this combustion and see where we are. So um, it's showing me a funny number on here. So let's try and zero this out again. Let's see where we're at. Yeah. Uh, so 9%, you know, on the on the CO2, um, five five parts per million. So um, we're going to make an adjustment to that again, just so I can you know, show you what happens there. So the manifold pressure. Just like most valves has a, a blind cap in it, so we're going to want to get that cap out of our way so we can access the actual adjustment. Again, it's a, a Torx 40 that will adjust this for us. Um, so the manifold pressure is going to work the same way. Um, and if you look real close, they'll give you a, a plus and a minus on there, so you kind of add and subtract the fuel. So well, it's 9.3 9 and 4 parts per million. So it, it's pretty good. So we're going to just going to bring this a little counterclockwise and See if we can knock it down just a little bit. Take a look at our pressure. It's like negative uh, 9.4, 9.3. So again, you know, I just wanted to knock that down just a little bit, just so it's, you know, not too far in the positive. And with a real small adjustment, I've gotten this down right where I'd like to see. So. Uh, 9.2 on the CO2, about 4 parts per million on the CO. Um, oxygen, of course, is 4.6, which is how we calculate the, the CO2, so uh, 9.1. So very small adjustments on the offset or the manifold pressure. Um, sometimes the throttle adjustment may require you know, more adjustments. Um, and usually right out of the box, we're not going to have to do too many adjustments at all. It's more just a documentation. Um, but this should give you a, you know, a, a good sense of how to make the adjustments. And just keep in mind that you definitely need a little bit of patience to get this done um, and make sure everything falls within the range that you're looking for. So I think we're going to call this done. We're at about 9%, three parts per million, uh, certainly well within the range. So before I do that, I'm going to shut it down. So I'm going to hit the reset. That'll kick it out of service mode for me. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to pull my analyzer out of here. And then I'm going to run it through an ignition sequence. One more time just to make sure that everything is, you know, it's operating correctly. Um, we know our combustion is good. Our gas level is good. Everything's where we'd like it to be. Uh, so with that being said, we should have a, you know, a decent ignition sequence. Um, and run very efficient. So we have ignition. The heater wants to go up to high fire. And there we go. So that's how you adjust a Phoenix light duty uh, on the combustion side with gas pressures. Thank you very much.